Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is part two to my fertility journey and my journey to conceiving my son. In this video I'm going to go into far more detail about the things that I actually learned um, in conceiving and trying to conceive and the things I will personally be trying to apply in the next time I try to conceive. Um, if you are somebody who struggles with your period being irregular or if you struggle with anxiety or being out of control then this video is for you and I really hope that it helps you. If you want to watch part one I will um, share it here. It is basically start to finish my fertility journey and my journey to conceiving my son is here so you can go watch that. But the biggest mental battle for me in trying to conceive was the idea that I had control over when, where, how um, we were going to conceive. I know myself and from speaking to a lot of you on Instagram through my DMs know that none of us want to hear, I do not want to hear that I do not have control over the outcome because it is probably the most terrifying thing to us. It is so scary to hear that in reality we actually don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what the universe has in store for us. We don't know how much control or how much <clears throat> input we actually have when it comes to getting a result. And looking back now I can see that letting go of hope which for some people will sound counterintuitive um, but letting go of hope was one of the most helpful things for me in getting through the darkest days probably of my life in trying to achieve something that I always wanted to achieve, becoming a mother. Um, being hopeful was actually more damaging to me um, and more scary to me than the reality of, of accepting that maybe I would never be become a mother the way I thought I wanted to become a mother. So let's get into the things that I learned. So the first thing that I will acknowledge and share is that manifesting for me very quickly turned into the illusion of having control over the outcome. And if that sounds familiar to you, that you are putting a lot of emphasis on it being a goal and achieving that goal alongside other goals in your life, my advice would be to not include pregnancy in your manifesting goals. There is already so much pressure and as you'll know from my pre previous video that stress and anxiety had a very negative effect on this my cycle and the regulation of my cycle. Um, so the pressure of timelines um, is something that you don't need, I didn't need, and it had such a damaging effect on um, my emotional well-being during trying to get pregnant. I felt that the thing that helped me the most was trusting that the baby that was meant for us would, would choose, choose us eventually. And I felt that manifesting did not allow um, for me to be gentle or compassionate with myself when I was in this kind of driven goal set, goal mindset. So in the end, as you'll know from my previous video, I completely stopped manifesting um, around um, pregnancy and for me anyway I will definitely be doing that again the next time I try to conceive I will not be manifesting or having goals or timelines um, and it's also just a really hard thing to do when you want something so much to not place to place zero expectation on yourself so I just feel you're already trying to achieve something you don't need um, manifestation to be um, almost adding an extra voice of pressure to yourself. The second thing that I tried to focus on was really trying to be present and being where I was. So really 
I know, and I know this sounds so basic, but really trying to enjoy um, being newly married, really trying to enjoy living in Lisbon. We had just moved to Lisbon at this stage. Um, I'm really just trying as much as I could to be present day to day and almost distract myself with things that I could do and that were within my control and ways to bring joy into my life that would help me refocus my energy on today rather than that constant goal in my mind of being pregnant. The next thing um, I already talked about in the previous video, but I do really feel like this is super important and really helped me. It was a massive turning point when I closed the door to discussing um, our journey to conceiving with my friends and family. Um, I think you're in probably the most vulnerable place when you're trying to get pregnant. Um, and you are already trying to grasp onto every sign, every feeling, um, you know, you might get a bit of a period pain and think it's your period, or you might get a cramp and see it as the egg attaching cramp. Um, and if you're discussing this with your friends, your friends are always going to want to be your biggest supporter, your biggest cheerleader, want to make you feel good in the moment. And they'll say, oh, that could be a sign that you're pregnant, or that could be, for me, that was the cramps of um, the early stages of pregnancy. And that's and literally you are in this such a vulnerable place that you are holding and clinging on to anything you can um, to make it feel like um, you are closer to your baby when in actual fact everybody is different every journey is different and the only thing that's going to help you in the moment is actually letting go and trusting and when you are constantly engaging in discussions um, with other people's experiences or about other people's experiences, then you're not giving space for your journey and your experience. For example, you could talk to somebody who has had one miscarriage and got pregnant immediately afterwards and then you could also talk to and that could give you hope or you could talk to somebody who had five miscarriages and that could make you immediately feel like oh my god that will be me or you know whatever it is i just feel discussing it with people um, and reading loads of people's stories for me anyway it was a really bad thing and it affected me really negatively so i didn't allow myself to do that throughout the experience or throughout the journey of trying to conceive number four was i also again talked about this in my previous video that i had seen an acupuncturist just before i got pregnant and then after um the miscarriage i had already planned to start with this other acupuncturist and um, this was before i knew i had uh, become pregnant in the december um but i had booked in with uh, her name is nina she's on morehampton road in dublin and she is basically known to be a miracle worker for uh, women getting pregnant and women struggling with fertility so because I had talked to other people who had basically experienced miracles from her um, I literally saw her as literally you are my pathway to conceiving I hung on every word she said she told me not to exercise for basically most of the month which was like in like so scary to me because I obviously exercise every day and she was telling me that that was bad um, and that that was going to affect negatively me conceiving so I wasn't able to exercise like before ovulation during ovulation like all of these windows that were basically adding up to most of the month at one stage she also said to me I can feel things are happening and I was basically like great throw in the towel I'm pregnant um, Nina says uh, and this just was quite a again it was adding to that idea that I was in control by by going to see her I thought that she was going to work that miracle for me um and then when moving to 
Lisbon, I was super stressed that because I wasn't going to see Nina meant that I wasn't going to experience the miracle of conceiving. Um, and anyway, I was adamant that I was going to continue the acupuncture because I thought it couldn't hurt. So I found an acupuncturist here and in actual fact, I realized how much I was, how much weight I was putting on the acupuncture and the acupuncture Acupuncturist, um, and I voiced to my new ac acupuncturist, you know, that I was worried about um, my exercise, and my previous acupuncturist has told had told me, you know, to cut it out or to do it then and not then, and I was I was just expressing that, like, you know exercise is a huge part of my life and it was making me worried um trying to balance conceiving and also just for my own mental health and sanity and um, continuing with my exercise and the new acupuncturist actually for me was such a better fit than nina the miracle worker in dublin now i want to say that the miracle worker in dublin still did help with miracle babies for women who were having trouble conceiving. I have heard from first-hand stories, but again, this is a reminder that everybody is different. Every woman is different and your baby is going to come to you differently to the way a baby will come to another woman. So again, it's just super important to be honest with yourself, to be in tune with yourself and to be really mindful and protect your space while trying to conceive um, so that you can allow yourself the time to listen to your body and to give it what it needs. What I needed, according to my acupuncture uh, acupuncturist, was, well, she asked me, what gives you joy? And at the end of every session, she would ask me, what are you doing this weekend or this week to give yourself joy? to experience happiness, to feel uplifted, to feel in the moment. And I would have to tell her what I was going to do. And when I went back in the following week, I would tell her, this is what I did. And maybe we didn't do that in the end, but I did this. And she encouraged me to exercise because she said, well, you know, it is one of the biggest things in your life that gives you joy. Why would you ever want to cut that out and um, you want to be happy and feel free and in your body when you're trying to conceive and exercise is what makes you feel that so do not cut it out um you know obviously i wasn't doing crazy high impact you know just after trying to conceive etc but you can look that up at you know online or talk to your acupuncturist about you know what kinds of exercise are appropriate for each time of the month but i will say that for somebody who exercises a lot i still did do you know hit sessions maybe they weren't as intense as previously but i still did them i still ran i still did handstands etc so that was for me an amazing lesson in finding things that work for you um, just because an acupuncturist was a miracle worker for one woman does not mean that she is a good fit for you and um, yeah I think that is just something that I will definitely be um, applying to my next uh, time con trying to conceive. <sighs> Lastly, I think this is probably the most important and it's one of the reasons I, I didn't want to video this story um, or is one of the blockages or resistances I had toward videoing this was I just did not want my video to be a trigger or to be something that you were clutching onto and that was causing a blockage for you in your journey to conceiving. Is that whether it's in this video or with your friends that you are talking to about trying to conceive or pregnancy or babies or becoming a mom is that people will say things like this is what worked for me i did x y and z and now i have my baby and you likewise might look to this video for comfort and as, and you might see it as a source of hope and of course 
I'm glad of that, but one of the main reasons I made this video or videoed this film and put so much work into this content and have been literally preparing this video for a year is that my journey was my journey and it was perfect in every way because I now have my son and your journey and your body and your baby is unique to you and is perfect in every way for you and because it is perfect for you and unique to you it is perfect because it will result in the baby that you are dreaming of and this might mean that you have three miscarriages this might mean that you have no miscarriages sorry i'm getting upset because this is something that i had to really get comfortable with and it's one of again <laughs> It's one that I wish when I talk to my therapist about it or talk to Connor about it was one I wish that I didn't have to accept but that my journey could have been or your journey could be that you have three miscarriages that you have no miscarriages that you get pregnant on the first try that you find a surrogate to carry your baby that you, that you adopt. But in the end, if you, if you trust fully, whatever way is your way will result in you becoming a mom. And I think for every woman, all we want is to naturally conceive our baby and I think when you add it up, you have to get comfortable with in a place where we must accept that what we really, really, what our heart really desires is to be a mother and to have a baby. And in order to, for that to happen, for some of us, that might mean that we get there in a way that we didn't think we'd have to. All I wanted was to get pregnant on the first go and hold my baby in my arms as soon as possible. That's what we all want. But getting comfortable with the fact that that might not be my journey and that might not be what the universe or my life has planned for me over and over and over again trying to get comfortable with that was in the end I think what helped me conceive my baby and in the end I was lucky because that's what it is it's all luck I was lucky enough to conceive naturally um, but I was in a place where I knew that if we had to we would go to the ends of the earth to become parents whatever that looked like because the journey that's meant for you might not be the journey you want and that's a that's really difficult and really hard um, and especially in a world where we are seeing everybody's journey up close and personal and other people are experiencing the journey you so desperately want and there are constant reminders of what you are not experiencing or what you are experiencing and I get it that it's so difficult. I personally um, did only a small bit of CBT during this, I actually only did one session if I'm honest um, and it was I was actually pregnant at the time and didn't realize but one of the things you know she my therapist who I will link below because she has saved me and so many dark times of my life um, kept pushing me was what's the scariest part and that's always what she says what's the scariest part and I said you know not becoming a mother never having a child and you know she said but today what's the scariest thing you know what's the scariest thing and I kept saying that and she said yeah but today what is the scariest thing that could happen you know and like actually 
getting a phone call that let's say Connor was terminally, terminally ill that would be the scariest thing because the man that I want to have a family with would be gone um, and I think I don't know why I'm sharing that I don't know if it makes you feel any better but I think for me anyway it was a good reminder of firstly just experiencing what you have and reminding yourself of what you have um, that we never know what's going to happen we don't know how long we have left which is pretty morbid but it helped me and it just made me realize that as well you know that hope and like I said this video might be a source of hope for you that hope for me anyway is a dangerous place to be um, it can give you a sense a full sense of control over your life and for me being realistic which is not very romantic it's not very beautiful and it sometimes can be really ugly um, you know Connor constantly reminding me that Molly our story might not be the one you want um, but he promised me that he would do everything and we would do everything within our power to become parents whether that meant surrogacy or whatever it was but being you know really real and being realistic for me um was a far less scary place and a far less lonely place and a far more open and vulnerable and tangible place to be in um and I hope that this video has perhaps spoken to you personally, has given you a, a space to, f to feel the scariness of, um, you know, the unknown in your journey um, to becoming a parent. And I hope that like my therapist Bev does for me, I hope this video challenges your perspective slightly and, and helps you let go of what you think should or must happen and helps you let go of that must mindset because it is a draining and lonely place. That struggle for certainty is is hopeless. It's 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 not it's not a positive place um, and I personally didn't think it gave me the it gave me access to my happiest self and my most open self and a place where I was open to conceiving a baby so I want to close this video with a quote from Blaise Pascal so important are we that we wander in the times which are not ours. We try to give the present the support of the future and think of a range of matters that are not in our power for a time of which we have no certainty of reaching. I don't know if that even makes sense to you. It made sense to me so much, but if you look, I'm gonna close this video now, but if you look at the most important things in your life, not, things that you have, not a running goal, not anything like that, but your friends, your family, your loved, your partner, the things that you would literally give your life for. Those things came into your life completely out of control. You'll notice that those things came into your life without you exerting any effort or any of your control. And if you look at kind of the things that led up to you, let's say meeting your partner or your best friend, it's a jumble of occurrences that you couldn't have planned even if you had tried, that basically it was just pure fate and chance that you met that person or your best friend. So I'm hoping that I've explained enough so that you see that the perfect antidote for my anxiety was that the constant craving for control was never going to be satisfied and and it would leave me exhausted and it most certainly would deprive me of the journey I was meant for and the jumble of occurrences and magic moments that were going to lead me to our miracle baby. 
so I'm going to close up the video here. I really hope that it has been a source of... I don't even know what, because I don't want to say comfort, um, but just a space for you to feel and to maybe reflect on things that aren't serving you in this journey um, and making space for things that do serve you personally. Um, I will be filming another video on how I manage getting my period back um, or how I managed to get my period back when it did its own little hiatus um, during trying to conceive. If there are any other questions as well, I think I might just include it in a bit of a QA. and a um, Maybe I'll put a question back over my Instagram, but also if you wanna just add any questions here or DM me on Instagram if you don't wanna make your questions public. I would love to hear your feedback if it helps you. Please just even put a little heart underneath the video if you would like more videos like this. Um, even if it's about breastfeeding or motherhood, uh, I think I just love YouTube for a safe space just to openly talk about things. Um, but yeah, be kind to yourself. I am sending you lots of love wherever you are and I will chat to you soon.